guys, welcome to Read Switch Tube. In today's video, we are going to talk about the ZVS induction driver. It can use also use as the, as the AC generator. Now look at the circuits. Here we have two inductor. Also, it's made of iron filling choke. And the exact turn, I don't think to count. But it just need like twenty to thirty turn is good enough. And the the usually people building a induction driver, yeah, they always choose the wrong capacitor. So sometimes, so they wasn't work as that efficient. The one they used is MP MKPH the capacitor and is zero point three UF and the voltage should be one thousand two hundred volts DC six hundred volts AC. Do you know to buy this type of capacitor? You thought it's quite hard, but actually, if you put the the words uh, uh, in uh, the ZVS capacitor, it will automatically come as that capacitor. But usually, I don't recommend you to build your own ZVS induction driver because. See to do that some of the complicated circuits and the and the, you 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 think it's just better to buy a already done PCB with heat sink on the MOSFET and the four hundred seventy ohm resistors with a specific watt and all sorts of little components. It's just worth to buy it rather than make it. And here is the PCB. You can buy a more expensive one than this one, but this one is just enough for the demonstration today we are using. So usually it will come up. Usually, just I just really suggest you that just buy a one with two choke rather than one choke because one choke you're going to make three coils that just even harder and the connection pins never ever put the voltage uh, uh, wrong way, you can destroy the circuits, especially the diodes and the transistors. So that's it. Now we are going to put the coils on. This I've got the other, I got it from uh, other stuff and I got that coil, already been made it's coil. You can do it for the induction driver. Here you can put it in. I've got just a rusty screwdriver and uh, if you screw it carefully I suggest you screw the both and the tip up and then put them in is the best way. Also remember to pretend the, the copper because copper got really easily being carbonated with the oops carbon dioxide. Just wait a second, I've screwed it too much. Now I've put the screw on. It will be definitely beneficial to use a magnetic screwdriver. And now you can put the two pins in like that, the coil, and just need to squeeze it tight. Never ever try to do suddenly disconnected the coils. The circuit is still working, but will have a high pitch noise. Also, will heat up the capacitors a lot. Also, you also might destroy the capacitor. Make sure they're tight enough, but don't do it too tight, else you might break the screws. Now here is the complete circuit. Also, you see that wasn't the component. Actually, it was also the component. It was a inductor. To test that, we could put a screwdriver in and connect it to the power supply, you can feel the heat, but usually you can't really sew it. So I have to demonstrate to you with hot glue stick. Now I've got my power supply and the amperage doesn't need to be that high. Usually they use a really high amperage one. Yeah, if you heat up metal a lot, then you should have a high amperage one. Also, the transistor will heat up a lot. Usually, working only on one screw, you know, one screwdriver, you don't need any heat sink at all. And uh, just tap it. And you can feel it soon heats up. Yeah, really slowly. Ouch, now it's hot. Hotter than I expected. Now, 
I can take it off, try it with a bit of hot glue. Hmm? Did it melt? Oh yeah, because it needs to be way hotter than that. So I'm just going to pop it in there for a moment to let it heat up. Now connect the pin and put it on the sides of the coil. You should see it. Now disconnect. Look at that, it's melted. So means it they can definitely can melt the hot glue stick. Do you want to know how this did works? Well, it's really simple. Actually, it's you would have expected. Actually, the screwdriver itself is another inductor, but just short, short it. So when I turn on the power supply, it generates the alternating electromagnetic field to like the thousands of hertz, and uh, it will be inducted to this screwdriver and the screwdriver is ferromagnetic uh, material so most of the current will go on there also called the skin effect and the two causing that also called the eddy current to demonstrate the eddy current you need to get like strong super magnets and get a copper plate and swing on it so because we swing the magnets on a copper plate copper plates also become a Inductor also called the uh, the uh, electric generator. It when it generate the electric current, it also generate the opposite current. So stop the ma uh, the magnet moving forward anymore. But it also called a magnetic break. During that happening, some of the energy will transfer it as the heat. So it's pretty simple. And the capacitor is just for the resonance alternating. You don't seem to worry about the turns that the induction heater. Just make sure it has few turns or more. Because if it has less turn, you're going to draw more higher power. You could buy a some a induction heater better quality than that because it has less solda. So in the future, I should put more solda on it. And uh, now it's totally cooled down. So. It's a pretty simple demonstration for the eddy current. Also, it's involved with the resonance frequency, also called the LC oscillation. Now, to do another experiment, we are going to do a aluminum ring levitation. Now, I've got a ferromagnetic core. If you wonder where did I get it, I get it from an old flyback te television transformer. But now I lost the rest of the parts of it, and. Uh, it's basically made of ferromagnetic p material and the conductivity is really poor so when I put the magnetic on it from the due to the alternating magnetic field the cor the most of the electromagnetic field will not dissipate as the eddy current and it eventually heat up the course that's the reason why on the power line transformer I have slide of silicon sheet to prevent uh, with resins to prevent the eddy current happening on the core but it can't be exactly take off all the eddy current we still will have something happening and uh, if you make a ring out of um, uh, aluminum for you and then you can levitate up just wait a second here I have an aluminum rope if I just take off a little bit from here now connect to and they must connect them so make sure they complete the circuit and then to causing the eddy current and eventually cause the reverse reverse magnetic field to levitate up you should see it now here is the power supply wire I connect it to the nine, 19 volt jack. It's better to have higher voltage. It will step down. Remember one thing. If you're using a transformer, you can't get high current and the high voltage at the same times because you need to once something will going to lose in the transformer. You can't generate anything up from nothing. So now connect it. Oh yeah, I just accidentally stopped it. Wait a minute. Here, I've cut reconnect the ring together and connect to the power supply. Look, it just did move a bit. 
See that? That's causing by the eddy currents generated from the core. But what's happened if I put the ne near more near to the core? Hoping that's more blow my power supply. It did because if I draw more current onto this coil, it also generate more reverse current. Also, will draw more current from this circuit to power it up. Oh, now it's, this is boiling hot, especially on this connect bit at there. So if I run, want to limit it up, that means I need to have even higher current. Just wait a minute, I'm going to get my high power transformer. Here we go, there is our high power uh, uh, transformer, also called a power AC to DC adapter. Do you know how much uh, wattage is this draw? To do this, we could do 36 volts times for the 4 amp, we will get the wattage. Now, do the simple maths calculations. 36 volts, yeah, times by 4 amp equals... First, we do... like that and you could use the grid method if it's help you but choose just choose your own method to do it this is the one of the method that I do the times to do the uh, sum and the wait a minute now 144 watts of power yeah, it's supposed to be quite high power transformer for that. Not a thousand watts yet. Just let's see what happens if we power this on. Now, they with our thick wire connections. Put, pop it in. Just try unscrews. How hot can we get with this high power one? Three, two, one, connect. Nothing happens. Wait. Wow, it's super hot because it draws to draw loads of powers from 36 volts. Now, let's do another experiment. Now, I'm going to get my aluminum foil ring. If you're interested in making an aluminum foil ring, you should also watch my other video. It's called How to Make a Foil Bowl. Wasn't that good? In the future, I will make a bigger bowl. So, stay tuned. The way I connect is I open one bit up and I screw one bit down and you can twist them up. You're still still full. Now we make the shape that just fits the core and we get our power supply. Look at that! Oh, the coil also move as well, causing bad. Now it flies away. Oh! It's also hot as well, causing the eddy current also heat up the metal. Let's see can, how, can, how hot can it he, heat it up. Oh, see the spark? That's a little spark. I love to use a screwdriver to become my spark gap. So make sure I don't damage my power supply connector. Oh, oh yeah. See? And the great things about they have oxide on your power supplies, on your screwdriver, so you can make more spark viciously. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Hot. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, bot like button and uh, I will make more video about this ZVS induction heat driver circuit. And uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time.